I've never been a believer in button down hatches. You have to go out and face the music. When that wind comes, you just look at it straight and you make it work. And you carry on investing, you carry on training. You know, what a fantastic time to do it. Hello and welcome to this MTD podcast. Uh, this is, I suppose, could be classed as a bit of a special podcast today because uh, I'm here at DMG Mori in Coventry, their UK headquarters. Uh, I'm joined by two gentlemen, one from MTD CNC, which is Mr. Mark Dedman, and the managing director of DMG Mori here in the UK, uh, Mr. Steve Finn. Um, for those that don't know, I'm Paul Jones, uh, the host of today's show and the managing director of MTD CNC. Dot com. Um, firstly, gents, welcome to this podcast. Uh, Steve, let's start with you. Uh, how are you keeping? Not seen you since the last live show. And of course, that's what we're going to be talking about as well today. Yeah, absolutely. And um, thanks for remarking that being a gentleman yeah. all this time. <laughs> it's been a tough, it's been tough, it's been tough for everybody. And, um, you know, there's lots of new things have come out of this. Um, manufacturing is succeeding. There is definitely an upturn. And it's not about what's happening at DMG Murray. You know, you're looking at the uh, the demand on iron ore. That's gone up significantly in the last few weeks. Uh, and that's a good barometer of, of actually our industry because it's metal. Mm. You know, and whether we're cutting it, making machines or cutting it on machines. And I think I'm, I'm excited um, about our next uh, live event, which is Technology Excellence um, from DMG Mori, which is happening tomorrow, which is the 23rd of February and the 24th of February. We're going to be here in Coventry. Um, there's going to be two days of, of, of cracking technology, as the um, headline states, but also we're going to be talking, Steve, uh, in detail about some of the machines and the, and the ex-demo machines that you've actually got here in Coventry, aren't we? That That's the biggest... Uh, oh no, I suppose at this point I should say welcome and Mark to the show as well. This is, um, yeah, a bit out of kilter, but are you keeping well? Well, well, just because I'm a Chelsea supporter, it doesn't mean that you should I, exclude, you know. Do. Yeah, I did come branding but, my uh, Arsenal top today, even though we lost. Well, I, I was looking back in the diary, actually. Uh, obviously, you know how intense these live events are, Paul, to put them all together with our team. But I mean, it's, re- it, you know, I'm really looking forward to it over the next couple of days. So, um, but was in Fronton this time last year, nearly, I think about yeah. uh, 10 days ago, Steve. Yeah, it was. And we miss that because it's a great showcase for us. It can it can demonstrate, you know, hundreds of our machines across quite a big span. And also looking at the assembly lines, the um, production in general, it's it's a very interesting visit for customers. We'll be there next we, year. We will, and we, we will. have to be. I mean, yeah. I do think going back to that event, it was probably one of the last overseas trips we did as a company almost 12 months ago and gee whiz I'm desperate to you know get back on a plane again and go and do some of those things because I think however however uh, good you are as a company at trying to promote your technology um, you know via other means engineers do still love to to come and touch and feel the kit don't they so we will yeah. get back to that but but in the meantime things have changed the way we promote and I'm sure that events like we're going to um, be participating in tomorrow and on Wednesday uh, and f- from the success of the one we did actually back in uh, the last quarter of 2020 is definitely these these live events Steve they are a good way of getting the message across aren't they? They're a good way for us from an economical point of view but I think more importantly for a customer, it allows him to watch it when he's ready to fit his schedule. So, you know, I've already spoken to a number of people who won't be able to join us live tomorrow. Um, but I said, don't worry, it's going to be on YouTube and you'll be able to watch it. Oh, great, fantastic. And then they can pick the bits that are necessary because the product range for us is so wide. Uh, and it's not just about machine tools. It's about, you know, cutting machine tools, additive and subtractive, it's about the finance, it's about the software, it's all about the digital solutions that we can offer, and of course everything that encompasses that as well. So, you know, it's a big story, and not everybody wants to sit there and watch the whole lot, so they can watch their 10 minute slot, which is really good for them, and they can do it in the comfort and safety of their own home at the moment. 
Yeah, no, it's, it, it, and it's a very Im- important uh, point, Steve. I think it does give them the flexibility to pick and choose what they want. So let's talk about what is going to be coming up in the next two days. Um, you can join us live uh, on YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook from uh, the tw- or on the 23rd of February, which is tomorrow as we re- uh, record this podcast, starting at 10.30. Uh, I'm running through till just after lunch. We'll be covering various themes um, on day one, which we'll go through and then we're doing the same on day two um, but we've, we'll have slightly different uh, a different theme today too which we'll go through in detail on this podcast so let's pick up with day one um, Mark with yourself it's going to be me and you and Steve firstly talking through an introduction and I'm assuming that will be a bit about how business is and how things are for DMG Mori at the moment and it might be a good interlude now to maybe touch on a couple of these points Steve because I've got some notes here that say uh, 43% of business last n- year for you was new business, wasn't it? Uh, why do you think that was? Well, it wasn't happening by accident, that's for sure. And it's something that we've been working on, I guess, over the last nine or ten years since DMG Murray came together as one company. You know, we had a lot of things to put into, order, into place, which we did. We've had to train a lot of people, which we have, and employ a lot of people, which we did. Um, so I think this is a, a long story to go on. It's not something that has happened just because of COVID, uh, and it's not by mistake. So yes, our business was down last year. Our business was down by about 16% across the board, which actually I'm very pleased with. Certainly, you know, if someone said to you this time last year, you're going to go through a shocking time, yeah, the world absolutely. is, <laughs> and you're going to be down 16%. Yeah. You'd snatch your arm off, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I was very pleased with the results that we had. Um, and we've seen uh, take up, particularly January and this month, enormous. Absolutely has gone. I mean, people are, as you said, are, are expressing this as a coiled spring. It has gone. Mm. You know, so it's been really, really good for us. We're still maintaining around 40% new business. And I think that's something that is the marketplace. The marketplace is now believing in us. They can see that we can deliver. There's stability. You know, I'm coming up to 39 years service next month. And, you know, I believe in the customer and the customer first. And that has always come through. Um, you don't you know, look old enough, Steve. I don't, I don't know, thank you very much. <laughs> I had my eyes tested, actually, uh, on Saturday. Maybe I need mine done too, well, don't you? Yeah, maybe you hearing. do, but he did actually have to ask my age. He said, I'm just checking. And I went, no, no, no. So anyway, um, I, I think that, you know, that we've got a lot to offer in various stages. The finance has been good for us. The MG Murray Finance, which will we'll feature heavily over the next two days, um, it's unique. Nobody, nobody in the world has got anything like it. Nobody can get near it because it's ours. It's our own book. We can write the rules and regulations. And for sure, we have to comply with um, you know, certain rules and regulations. But we can look at customers in a very different way. And one of the videos you did recently on Bedford CNC, mm, there's classic. a classic example. Yeah. Small cup, man, one man band. He wasn't even thinking of investing, couldn't invest. Didn't have the money to invest. We have made it all viable. Mm. Uh, I mean, he's never bought a new machine in his life, to be fair. He's no, never had a new machine. This, yeah. this is his first new machine. And he wouldn't have had another new... He wouldn't have had a new machine unless he was offered that commercial flexibility. But, but the downside now is that he's forgotten how to uh, put a sales pitch together because he's, he's basically got extra capacity. All, all the work's going at, you know, going mainly on the DMG Mori. It's a CTX, isn't it? CTX, yeah. 800 And uh, yeah. yeah, I think he's got to revisit how to pitch for new work because the capacity's there now. Well, the, the good thing about Andy Seuss is I actually work... I worked at uh, WH Allen's and there was a podcast a couple of weeks ago where we did with him. Uh, he worked there as well, but he was a few years ahead of me in his uh, time and we were sort of waxing lyrical about how the industry has changed and how you do have to get more out of your machines these days than you used to because, you know, the demand and the competitiveness. But, but he did but he did buy the machine based on watching uh, our live event last year here at uh, DMG Murray yeah. UK, which, which, and that's the power of, uh, you know, digital media, because I remember when we launched or helped launch the M1, and uh, I think, uh, you know, within five minutes of, of actually the show uh, stopping, uh, you got a call from one of your uh, sales guys who literally was on the M1 to go and uh, sell the first machine. So the, the power of what we do is, is perfect, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it gets to areas that, that we couldn't ordinarily get to, and particularly... You know, coming back to your question there, what's changed? This has changed. 
you know, people are listening to these kind of podcasts, watching stuff on their phones, on their tablets, you know, a lot more. Um, we have a very, very big message to to send, and sometimes it's too big. So it does take it into bite-sized lumps, and you can look after it. So Andy, you know, at Bedford CNC, absolute classic, you know, we, we probably wouldn't have been knocking on his door. But just to reiterate, he's, he's got a, a machine shop, he's got five days' work every week, constantly, puts a new machine in, suddenly does that five days' work in two days. Mm. That's where his extra capacities come from. But so he, it's not a big worry to him because it still balances the books, but he's got that capacity now. Yeah, that's good. What, 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 yeah. what I found from talking to him, and I know we're, we're, we're sort of going off, off the curve a bit here, we'll come back on to what's going to happen at the event, but I think it's an interesting point is uh, I was surprised when I spoke to him that um, he only has in front of him a few days' work at at any point I said what's your order book look like for March April he's like March April <laughs> he says I only know what I've got for the next five or six days and he was saying you know I wouldn't have bought this machine I bought this machine because it took the risk out of me worrying about not only making certain repayments but also worrying about work he says now I don't have to necessarily worry about the commercial side as much as I would have done if I'd bought and had to pay in the same way as uh, as most on a new machine. I can forget that now, and now I can just still carry on and concentrate on where I'm getting my work from, and I can begin to build that up because I've got this capacity. So it was, it's interesting how hand to mouth some of these businesses are, and how much support they do need, and what a difference it can make um, to them. So I do I, I do think it's probably something we may talk about uh, on the show as well. One thing that I think has changed, uh, it, you know, since uh, the, you know the two companies, DMG Mori or you know DMG and Mori coming together, is that perception. Uh, I think a lot of engineers out there, you know, I've always bought that uh, type of machine, that brand, but now with the finance, with new business, and uh, you know, the portfolio of over 150 di- different machines uh, added to that. You've got automation as well as additive. You've got so many products to, to actually offer customers now that the perception has changed, Steve, hasn't it? Very much so. But the important thing is not only do we have to deliver that from the factories, we have to deliver the right resources from personnel from the UK to make sure that we support it correctly. And that, that we've done a nice job on. You know, we've had a we've had a good, and we still have a good apprentice program. Bring these people through, uh, and we've got some great guys that are actually out there demonstrating, training, installing machines uh, as of today. So that has. But coming back to your question, visibility visibility for everyone is is greatly reduced, and I think that's something that we've had problems with. You know, you're working from one month to the next. Mm. For sure, you can see projects on the go, but. It wasn't like it was two or three years ago, mm. you know, where you could start predicting stuff a little bit more further down the line. That's gone. Yeah. Those, and those days are gone. But I was talking actually yesterday to my next door neighbour, who's she's fairly senior in the NHS, and they are very, very concerned about bringing their business back online to how it was, you know, 18 months ago. So all the operations have got to go through are various things. And I said, well, interestingly enough, we supply into that industry and we're seeing it pick up significantly in the last sort of three or four months on investment, particularly in plant uh, equipment and, uh, you know, these hips, all that kind of thing. So, yeah, it, it ripples. Manufacturing ripples through the whole of the world. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It definitely does. And coming back on to this event, and for those, again, tuned into this podcast, um, we're, we're shooting this the day before, which is the 22nd of February, and the live events are happening on the 23rd and 24th. Now, if you're listening to this past uh, past these dates and the events already happened, then, of course, please visit our YouTube channel, um, uh, youtube.com slash mtdcnc, where you'll be able to watch everything that's happened on the 23rd and 24th of February. Equally, it will be on LinkedIn um, and across all of our other social platforms. So for day one, I'm just going to go through what's going to be happening on day one and then day two in one, and then maybe we can just pick areas out of this. So we've got the the usual introduction first thing in the morning with yourself, Steve. Then we're going into a milling overview at 10.45, where we're going to have Tim Greenhall and Kevin Buck on the sofa with myself and Mark. Uh, We're going to be talking about um, the milling machine range on the on the milling side, some 64 machines, three, four, five axis that we'll be covering um, in quite a short space of time, just to give you a really nice overview of, of what's uh, possible on the milling side. Then at 10 past 11, we'll be joined by Martin Adams and 
Dane Beresford, where we'll be talking about the portfolio of turning, uh, which again, over well, 68 machines I've got here in the in the portfolio of all axes, which we'll be covering during that um, that piece. Now, both of those sections are going to be around about 20, uh, 20 minutes in length, just over 20 minutes in length, so a lot to pack in. We'll then be talking about the additive side um, with Terry Turner powder beds and hybrids um, and then around about lunchtime 12 o'clock we'll be touching on the DMG Mori um, aspects with uh, John Adams uh, John's a great guy he joined us on the last event as well lots to learn there and then we're going to have uh, one thing we've touched on already today on this podcast an overview of the finance side which has been so successful for you that's day one uh, day two uh, has a similar running order in terms of what we're going to be talking about on, on the times perspective so we'll have an introduction then at 10 45 we'll be talking about milling and we're going to be specifically focusing here on automation with the, the DMU 50 DMU 75 uh, and the NMV 3000, which is a cracking machine, which we did talk a lot about on the last live too. Uh, 1110, it will be turning automation on the NLX 2500 and the CLX 450. Um, that will be with Martin Adams and Dane uh, Beresford again. And then we will touch on the additives again with uh, Terry. Uh, and then we'll be talking net service messenger with John Adams and Charlie Lucas, uh, Lindsay and Mark will be doing that. And then we'll finish off again tomorrow with a discussion on finance, um, you know, whatever machine you're purchasing from DMG Mori. So that that gives us a quick overview of what's going to be happening in the coming two days. And as I say, if you're listening to this past the event, then you can always go on our YouTube channel and, uh, and see what happened. Um, Steve, out of all these areas, what most excites you about what we're going to be talking about? Um my staff, actually. <laughs> I know that seems a bit strange, but no, I'm really extremely proud of my staff to, to sit in front of a camera and go live. Um, and we, we proved that they could do this on the last event that we did back in October. Um, and I got a comment, I think you got the comment, Mark, from, back from one of my competitors, going, wow, is that the guys that are working for Steve? They are. I'm very proud of what they've done. They put a lot of effort into it and they want to talk to the customer base. They want to show the customers what we have. They're very proud of it. But on saying that as well, we have an awful lot of stock that we've purposely brought in for this, um, hopefully, this launch of the, the new world that we're in. Uh, and the, the, I've got uh, something in the region of 40 odd machines, which is quite a big investment. And there's some the standard NLX 2500, 10 inch tie. Chuck in lathe with as bar capacity, driven to all Y axis sub spindle, uh, DMU 75, which is a five axis vertical, very popular machine, giving you about 500 square capacity. Uh, the NMV 3000, we've have a few of them in stock. That's a really special machine. It's, it's got a big tool magazine, um, it's got a five axis application, turning on it as well, and um, auto loading, so a 34 pallet system. So it's a really good lights out. That's the one that's going to be set behind us, isn't it? That's going to be set behind us, yeah. Fabulous machine, isn't it? It's probably probably one of our most robust, most reliable, most accurate five-axis machines that we have within the product range. Um, But it's a really neat footprint for actually what it can output. It's very, very good. I've been to one of your customers, actually. I'd better not mention them, but uh, I think they've got a bank of four. Mm-hmm. Um, you know who I'm probably talking about, but yep. uh, very high profile uh, companies, and and to see these machines actually uh, running and and the parts that are coming out of them, it's pretty high tech. Yeah, it's very very very, very capable machine. And then right at the other end of the scale, a couple of uh, manual machines. So we do a manual uh, teach mill and a manual teach lathe, particularly for colleges, schools, universities, that kind of thing. So we've got them in the showroom as well. So we're really going all the way through the whole portfolio with additive um, and everything else. So all these machines are coming in stock. They're all inflation proof. So, you know, if I was sitting here doing an economics programme, I'm sure that inflation is going to rise in the next few months over mm-hmm. the next year as well. Um, just by the law of economics, it will happen. Uh, but these are inflation proof, so they're good prices ready for immediate delivery. Um, we've got the people, we've got, got the transport in place and everything else. So, yeah, that, that's something that I want my guys to promote this next two days. I, I, I must admit, sorry, Paul, right. um, when, when I came to, to talk to you 
uh, about this event, Steve, and, and you said to me, look, you know, I want this to be uh, a, a platform for, for sales. You know, it, it worked last October in reference to the selling machines, but I've never seen so many machines in your showroom, you know, still wrapped up in a box, basically. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and obviously I can see why now. Commitment to UK manufacturing. It's simple. Um, you know, I have a great belief in our product, a great belief in UK manufacturing. I believe that, that, that these machines will be sold, they will be installed and given customers benefit uh, and we'll bring some more coming back in as well um, but you know my colleagues in Italy and France Spain these are the three big countries in Europe Germany doing really well good business at the moment good, good that's really good that's news. really, that's really to good hear. so I don't want them to hog all the production <laughs> yeah you know? so I'll have some thank you, you yeah. know? I think from an end user's perspective this is where I think it's going to get really interested in the coming months because I've always said throughout this I think when we come out of um, what we've been going through, there's going to be those that have and those that haven't. The ones that are going to start opening their curtains in a, a month or two's time to look at what's happened over the last 12 months, the ones that have really battened down the hatches, I think that they're going to come out of this thinking, hang on a minute, look at what some of my competition have done. They've they've bought into automation. They've, they've, they've replaced old machines with new ones. They've done the things that maybe I should have done because I'm now... I'm now behind and I've got to catch up. So I wonder whether we, as an industry we'll see almost like a tandem investment, companies that haven't and they now realise they need to and the ones that have are doing well so they'll continue to invest as well. So it could become a really busy time for industry. Well, the microphone just almost fell out. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> you're right there, Paul. It could be, but I have my worries that... You know, I've never, ever been a believer in battening down the hatches. No. And I've been through quite a few. You know, we went through the Twin Towers horror. Um, we went through various um, you know, recessions. The Lehman Brothers put us in a really tight spot, didn't they? Just um, a bit, yeah. You know, and I've never been a believer in batting down the hatches. You have to go out and face the music. When that wind comes, you just look at it straight and you make it work. And you carry on investing, you carry on training. I've had enormous amount of training in the last 12 months mm. to my staff mm. you know what a fantastic time to do it mm. and um you know if you're prepared if you're ready as a company to come out uh, and and take your curtains down at one side and some back open for business and you haven't got that resources behind you or you haven't got the facilities you're in trouble mm. and so i think that's that's really where we've actually fared um and i've seen it time and time again you know after the lehman brothers um, you know, I went from a £7 million company to a £30 million company inside eight months. It was just because we were prepared, mm. and we're prepared this time as well. Well, you prepared to, to, to invest in a, a, another live event on the back of, uh, you know, straight after the, we, we finished, you said, we've got to do another one of these when the time is right. So, you know, it just shows that, you know, it, you're pushing out that investment to other you know, machine tool companies to a certain extent uh, that want to buy the best kit available and yeah. actually move forward. And I think there are these these engineers out there that do, you know, engineers, they like nice cars, they like nice machines, they like nice toys. And I mean that in the literal sense, they really do like investing in in things. And I, and I do think that whatever opinions are on, on, on the government over the recent year, I do think that, that some of the schemes that they've introduced have, have been really good to help companies, you know, de-risk um, investment. And certainly with what DMG Mori are doing on, on their finance side as well. It, it, it's, we keep saying it, but really this is the time. This is the time to start making those changes because there probably will not be a better time. Like you say, inflation and, th you know, things happening. You know, I think it's so important important i think it's one of the messages i'd like to certainly get across uh, in the coming two days as well um gentlemen i'm gonna uh, i think we're gonna we're gonna wrap this one up for now this podcast and encourage people to go across to our youtube channel to watch um the live event if you're listening to this today uh on the 22nd of february be tuned in um tomorrow uh, from 10 30 and of course wednesday as well at 10 30 if you are listening to this post the event you can find all of uh, what happened over the next couple of days on our youtube channel or on any of our social media platforms. Um, Steve, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. And um, thank you very much for joining us on this podcast. Mark yourself, looking forward to being on the sofa with you too. Uh, let's hope for a good couple of days and um, some more sales for you, Steve, out at the end of it. Yes, thanks. Thanks very much, Paul and Mark. I think that um, 
the interesting thing is we can keep the market informed about you know, what we're doing and I think that'd be good for them um, and yeah, we'll certainly be doing that in great a, platform to do it as well yep in okay. abundance thank you very much gentlemen and that's it for this week's MTD CNC podcast Thanks for listening to the MTD Podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.